Tabitha McLaughlin, and Tabitha is uh, with uh, Saskatoon Crisis Nursery. Uh, like I was uh, just uh, speaking with Tabitha, Sa uh, Vendasta did quite a few fundraisers for these organizations, and we're very close with them, so uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Is this on? Okay, perfect. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Tavi, and I just really uh, want to thank Nakia and Vendasta for having me today, and I feel pretty privileged to be um, representing uh, the Saskatoon Crisis Nursery and also the Parent Aid Program, which is our sister agency. Um, so Nakia has been asking me to speak for a little while, and I've um, been running away from her and hiding, but I'm here today, and so in terms of workplace health, I just thought I'd process some of the things that I've been learning um, just over the last few months, actually. And so um, this really is about just some of my processing. I'm fairly cheesy. So this is, um, there's a lot of cheese in this slideshow. So if you like the cheese, you know, I'm I'm, we'll get along well. Um, so I titled this presentation, The Necessity of We and the Necessity of Wonder. And I think this ties really nicely with Don's presentation. Um, in this vital signs, he, there's a quote at the back, and, and you brought this forward, a strong sense of belonging central to Saskatoon's, or a strong sense of belonging is central to Saskatoon's vitality. And this is what I'm essentially talking about. A strong sense of belonging is, is imperative for any organization, whether it's marketing or Starbucks, or you work at, a, work at a grocery store or the crisis nursery. If you don't have a heartbeat in your agency, you will have, um, chaos with your staff. You know, this is where workplace conflict comes up. This is where uh, people will fight uh, any sort of change. Uh, we, need, we need a heartbeat. We need to cultivate that. And so that is the we. And it's about connection. It's about community and celebrating that. Um, and that's what at the nursery and the parent aid program and our board, the Saskatoon Society for the Protection of Children, what we believe uh, to our core is that it's about connection. And then the necessity of wonder, I can't be here today without um, bringing up uh, that beautiful childlike idea of wonder and dreaming together and processing that as a team and how that has a direct impact on your, in your workplace. <coughs> oh, wrong, there we go. Okay, so just a little bit about me. Um, I graduated with a social work degree in 2012. Um, after I graduated, I was working at the nursery at the time, and uh, um, I had an opportunity to work with the health region, so I worked with CPAS, and I loved it there. Um, I just recently, in July, started, I transitioned into acting executive director for the Saskatoon Society for the Protection of Children, and so that, again, is the governing body of our two agencies, the Crisis Nursery and Parent Aid Program. And I also, at the same time, started graduate studies through the University of Calgary uh, for my MSW, and it's focusing on leadership and human services. And I essentially, I mean, my application didn't say this, but uh, I essentially wanted to get in there because I was tired of working for systems that was failing the client populations that I was working with. Um, I think they're in, in, fundamentally, I mean, the ideas are good, the policies are okay, but the programs were not working and often they are creating further barriers uh, for our client populations. And so, and I was also very a very bitter and jaded person. And so I was hoping I'd get my MSW and move up the ladder and fire all my bosses and take over and start everything new. Um, but actually I, I got the pride kicked out of me and it was the most incredible, incredibly humbling experience. Um, it's not about, all, all the business rules and, and, and strategic planning and operations, but it's about authentic leadership. And, and that is not just about uh, any supervisors or team leads, but authentic leadership is all the way down to the frontline staff and how we deal with our clients, how we deal with our customers, and what that means. We all, we all have this calling to be an authentic leader. And so part of what I'm also going to be talking about, uh, Simon Sinek, is uh, I have a big old crush on him. I love my husband, but I love him. <laughs> I, Simon is, has these really incredible um, values that he promotes. Uh, Brene Brown, she talks a lot about shame, shame resilience theory, and um, vulnerability. Uh, and these are all really important um, values to incorporate in any sort of organization or business. OK, so this man. Um, I, I really, I've been like thinking about what I was gonna say today and then like re, 
thinking again and just like processing it over and over again. But last night I was, I was thinking about my dad quite a bit. Um, he's adorable. This is Rexy. Uh, in my community, he's known as Sexy Rexy. I don't know if there's um, Empire State Record fans here or not. Or is that what the name of the movie is? I never watched it. But apparently there's a Sexy Rexy in it. So that's my dad. Um, but he is, uh, he is an entrepreneur at heart, but unfortunately he does not have the skills to make any business a success. But he is the most resilient man I have ever met in my life. He has failed over and over and over again. He's worked tons of different jobs, but he loves every job he's been in, um, from working at a grocery store to a blueberry farm to um, uh, he did shipping. He worked at Rico Canada for 15 years. Um, he's currently working in, uh, and I think this is the best opportunity he's ever had, is working in a group home with um, men with intellectual disabilities and supporting them and just being their friend and that sort of thing. But my dad, ha there's something about him. I, I remember when I was younger, I was always embarrassed by him because he would say anything he wanted. Uh, he was never afraid to be himself. And I was just like, Dad, you can't ask people that. It makes them uncomfortable. But what he brought was authenticity. He was able to connect with people in such a deep way. Um, and that's why he felt like, like he could fit into any job, a any workplace. It's because he, what was most important to him was his ability to connect with people, hear what their highs are, what their lows are, what their strengths are, where do they need growth. And he would be really honest about where he needed growth and then, and then and collaborate with them on how they can move forward. And even if it was at a grocery store and they're, you know, stocking produce, it was, he just had this, abil this beautiful capacity and ability to connect with people. And, um, and, and part of that is creating narrative, you know, and how important that narrative can be in collaboration. <clears throat> So uh, this is just a general work, uh, or just some general questions. Um, and you can, you can, I guess we'll do like a yes or no thing with your hand. So if it's yes, you can raise your hand. But for the most part, do most of you guys feel valued in your workplace? <laughs> okay, that's great. I, uh, it's good to see <laughs> that many yeses. Um, and then the second question is just trying to gauge who's here, uh, if anyone has a position of leadership. So if you're in a team lead and you're like trying to move a team forward on some sort of goal or you're a CEO, uh, a manager, supervisor, so anyone with some sort of official uh, leadership position? Okay. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering just to gauge, but again, I come back to, uh, the idea of authentic leadership being everybody's responsibility. So, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nervous and sometimes I curse when I am nervous, so I will try not to. <laughs> but I, <laughs> but you know, uh, authentic leadership is about when you're at the water cooler with, with your frontline staff, you know, your, your team, and you're bitching about your bad day, that there's an ability to be authentic and real and move forward and connect there and, and, and take, what is the solution there? Connect with your team and, and don't just focus on the negative and on these things that are, are, that are dragging you down and making you feel like it's not, you're not able to find a solution, but find one together. And so this is what I'm going to be talking about. Oh, almost lost a gong thing. Okay, so cultivating authenticity. This is a quote that I really appreciate. To be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you every, everybody but yourself means to fight the hardest battle which any human can fight and never stop fighting. So um, my first, one of my first jobs when I first moved to Saskatoon from BC was working at the crisis nursery. I was one of their pagers and I was often there even when I wasn't supposed to be working because I loved, I loved it so much. And at the nursery what, and at Parent Aid Program, what we really... Uh, value is authenticity and being able to connect with our families. Parenting is one of the hardest things anybody can do, but when you're dealing with issues of poverty, um, you have no food to feed your kids, or you're just stressed out, you had a mom who never, who you felt never really loved you and now you have kids of your own, parenthood is really hard. And, and what the nursery does is facilitate conversations where we can be authentic with one another. So we sit with mom and the kids and, and we just like, what is going on? We, we lay out what our strengths are, what our program do, what we can't do. And, and the parents are really, they, they are, there's a space for them just to be vulnerable with us and through that we can celebrate and that's what we need in, in any workplace. We need an ability to create environments where people can feel safe to be authentic and to be themselves. 
Um, and so what authentic leadership can do, it is it creates an environment of trust. And again, Simon Sinek talks a lot about trust and, and when you don't have it, what can happen. And, and also it creates an environment for wonder. <coughs> so environments of trust in the workplace, what do they look like? Well, if you have um, a team that celebrates being mindful and intentional about bringing their best self forward and being who they are and being safe to be who they are, you will have people who are able to connect on a deeper level. Um, I've been reading a little bit about Margaret Wheatley. She's super cheesy, so if you don't like the cheese, do not open up any of her books because you will probably barf within 10 pages of it. <laughs> um, but she talks about, we have to stop thinking of businesses or any organization uh, like a machine that's you know uh, this thing that just keeps going we all get to this outcome we get to our goals but it is a living breathing entity uh, organizations have a heartbeat and that heartbeat is all of us it's us and we need to engage in that so when we cultivate authenticity when we cultivate trust you will see employee engagement rise uh, we'll start seeing intrinsic motivation rise in our workplace. So instead of having employees, and some of you may know who this person might be, um, don't be mean to them, but these people who just show up to work and you know they're just trying to get their paycheck and to pay their bills, they show up Monday to Friday and they're not engaged. And I think it, extrinsic motivators or getting rewards or promoting uh, that sort of um, intentionality in a workplace is okay. But if you don't have someone believing in what this organization is doing, then it's not worth it because then you have chaos, you'll have conflict, you'll have confusion, people don't know what their roles are, people overstep their roles. It, you, have to, you have to drive these intrinsic motivators and again, that requires authenticity and trust. Um, if someone, if you create an environment of trust, you'll have work, uh, employee dedication. Uh, the program director of the crisis nursery has been involved with the nursery for over 25 years. Uh, the nursery has been through many ups and downs, not knowing whether we'd have money to pay our staff. Um, you know, it's a nonprofit. We're always at the chopping block. Uh, it's a tough job, but for 25 years, and, and Lisa is very intentional. She has signs everywhere at the nursery. What is our heartbeat? We take care of ourselves. We take care of each other, and we take care of this place. Those are they're really simple ideas, and it works anywhere. Um, and then Judy from the Parent Aid program, we just uh, celebrated. She's been involved with Parent Aid for over 31 years, and the program has only been around for like 33. So there's something when you when you cultivate a heartbeat, people will want to stay. They'll want to. They'll fight with you to the bitter end because they trust you. You you have a common vision. You have a common belief, and we have to. We have to cultivate that no matter where we are. <clears throat> and again, just uh, solidarity. Um, I was, I don't know where I got that quote, and that's not a good thing, I should have referenced it. But anyways, uh, because they would have done it for me, like if you have engagement, if you have people who are intentional about supporting one another, they will fight with you to the end for whatever that common vision is, and we need to cultivate that. And um, for any of the introverts in here, uh, when I talk about co uh, cultivating collaboration, it's not about getting into room and brainstorming or, you know, I, I, collaboration is really about creating an environment where people can be creative and bring forth what they need to. Um, I've been hearing lots of stories from Nakia about Vendasta and, and the kind of environment that you guys create and it, it's really incredible and, and really revolutionary in terms of how a lot of businesses work. Uh, this seems like a, a great environment where c collaboration is, n is integral and, and vital part of what we do and it's important, uh, it's important for workplace health. Uh, you can physically create a space for, um, for engagement. I just recently watched a little uh, bio about Steve Jobs and when his involvement with Pixar. And the workplace, like I mean, everyone has like their workstations, but most of the work environment is uh, really uh, to promote um, people coming together, playing and processing and dreaming up ideas together. So they they physically laid out their environment so that people build relationships. And so that's you can do it in that way. Or you could just give, give employees an opportunity or ask your boss, can I just spend a day where I, I work best at a coffee shop, I have this idea and I really like to, I'd really like to develop this more. We need to be able to have flexibility and space to be creative to um, bring forward what our authentic selves can bring. And if we, we are forced to be something that we're not, that's when that creative spirit dies, that's when uh, our desire for connection dies. And so that's really what I mean by collaboration. And, um, 
and again, narrative. It's about telling stories and listening to one another. Um, uh, there's nothing better than a workplace that just when we really get to know each other and really get each other. And that's, and again, I'm just going to do a little shout out to the nursery and parent aid. That's why our program for over 30 years, they work. We are, it's, n it's so simple. We listen to the story of mom or dad and we validate their story and we support them and then the kids stay with us. They entrust, they, and with that connection, they, I, I remember leaving Simone uh, for daycare, my daughter, she's three. And it was like, it took me a year to get up to that point, uh, to like leave her to, uh, in a stranger's hands. But these parents connect with us, they trust us because we are intentional in that connection, and then they feel safe to leave their kids there. And, and it's just by telling stories and listening to one another. It's a really simple thing, and it, it just it needs intentionality. And this is my little Simone. She's an old soul. Um, uh, and so wonder, uh, there's a quote by Socrates, wisdom begins with wonder. And not just wonder, like that childlike imagination and dreaming up big ideas, but we, um, you know, Eastern philosophy talks about we're yin and yang, we're good and bad. So don't focus on the bad within your teammates or your supervisors or your managers, but celebrate the good there's light in each and every one of us and so celebrate the opportunity for that to come out in your workplace and and it'll be incredible the things that can come out of it so that's all i have to say <laughs>